Hey everyone, it is July 2014, but we are gonna talk about the products that I loved back in July 2011, see if I still love them, if I still use them, and if not, what has replaced them? And this has become a monthly video called Throwback Thursday for those of you that are new to the channel or haven't seen one of these before. And my hope is that everyone who does YouTube beauty videos will do this one day too, because I wanna know what happened to everybody else's favorites. So let's get into it. I am referring to my video on my phone from back then to see what I mentioned. The first thing I'd mentioned back then was NUR, Nurber XO. She's still a favorite, we just don't see her as much, so I'm always happy to see her face when I can, although she is making videos for HSN, so you can find her over there as well, but I still like seeing her on YouTube. Okay, Essence Creamy Nude Lipstick. I still have it, I am wearing it today. It is well loved, there's not a lot left. Um, to be honest, or as my children are now saying all the time, which is driving me crazy, TBH, um, I don't really wear nude lipsticks anymore. I really prefer wearing brighter colored lipsticks. That's just kind of where I am right now in my makeup routine. But if I were to wear a nude, well, I don't need to swatch it, it's on my lips. Um, I like this one because it's a little darker and it gives you a little more color. It's not that dead corpse like like Mac Myth. Um, so I prefer, I do like it and I still have it and I still reach for it if I were to wear a nude. Um, next is the Essence Black Mania Mascara. Well you know that I've been having issues with mascara but if I were to wear a normal mascara, not a tubing mascara, I still love Essence but the one I liked most recently is the Essence I Heart Extreme Mascara. And some, it's the crazy volume version. And sometimes I still will, if I really want that big volume, which I really do, I will put this on first and then layer it with one of my tubing mascaras to kind of lock it in. But that's a lot of work. So I don't do that all that often. Next on the list is the e.l.f. Golden Bronzer. And I still have it, but I don't use it at all. And I don't see myself reaching for it. It did dry, it does dry up. And now that I've had the experience of using other similar bronzers, the one that I love, and I don't know if they still make this, I know it comes in a pink as well, is the Marc Touch and Glow Shimmer Cream Cubes. I like the packaging, I have to admit. Um, this is the warm toned version of it. It's so much creamier and I'm wearing it today sort of all over not, it's not the only bronzer I have on today, actually, but as the shimmering one, I love, generally, I prefer matte bronzers, and I use a matte bronzer every day. Today, I'm actually wearing a brand new one that my friend brought me from London yesterday. It's the Bourjois, um, the brick one that smells like milk chocolate, but I've noticed when I tan, this is, this is as tan as I get. This is self-tanner that I put on last night. It's the Saint Tropez regular foaming one, if you're wondering, from here up, from here down. It's the bronze, dark bronze one, dark, the dark foam. Um, that I don't get a lot of dimension on my face as much when I'm tanned. So I will still kind of do a little contouring, a little all over bronzer, but I like to follow up with a shimmer bronzer kind of around the cheekbones just to give me some more dimension and life to my face. So I still, I prefer this over the e.l.f. one now. Not that the e.l.f. one's bad, I just have, I like the other one better. CoverGirl, the, I liked back then the CoverGirl Intense Shadow Blast. They were the kind of colored eyeshadow primers in a almost like a lip gloss container. It had a doe foot applicator. I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, I don't know where they went. I did like them. They dried up. They are gone. And I have replaced those with a multitude of the Maybelline um, color tattoos. And the two colors that I had used in the video were a uh, beige champagne color and a pink. And I prefer these. This is the inked and pink. And this is the barely branded. And I do like these um, more. They do dry up though, but I've had them for a while, so that's okay. Um, next on my list was the Essie Saint Tropez, which apparently I liked two months in a row. And I am actually getting my nails done today, and I'm probably going to put that on my toe, on my toes, no, on my fingers. If you need a just go-to neutral that has a little, I would almost say satin finish to it, it's not, it's a cream, but it's not deep, it's not a flat, it has dimension. Um, I don't wanna, the one in the middle here is Saint Tropez. It's kind of a cooler tone. On either side, I've been playing. When I do want a little more oomph to my nude, my go-to is Godiva by Zoya. In fact, I just ordered another bottle of it as backup. And I try just for fun, I did one coat of Saint Tropez and then a layer of Godiva over it. I don't know if this is focusing. So as you can see, 
they're all beautiful. Um, so if I want shimmer, I go for Zoya Godiva. If I want more of a traditional cream finish, I'll go for Estee Saint Tropez, and they are lovely. And, ah, Real Techniques Buffing Brush. I guess back then that's what I was using to put on my foundation. There's nothing wrong with that brush. I like it, but if I'm going to be using a brush the last, I don't know how many months it's been, I reach for this one, and this is the Sedona Lace FB07. Um, I use this with every, found, every liquid foundation I really like. And um, so if I'm going to use a brush, sometimes I reach for the Beauty Blender instead, but if I'm gonna use a brush, I do like this one. I would, own the, I would say these do get dirty quickly, and when this is not clean, it streaks your foundation everywhere. So make sure you keep it clean. I guess that's with any brush, right? Real take, okay, talked about that. Milani HD Advanced Concealer. I think that was the highlight, I think it was like a highlighter pen. Um, I think, I don't use it. Any, I, I didn't even, after that, that month, I think I started not liking it. Um, I have tried some other versions of it. I do like the MAC Prep and Prime uh, highlighter in the pen form. I have it in Radiant Rose, which is not a true highlighter. It's like a salmon-y pink, but I've tried the, the similar skin tone version. I like it. I really, I think I need to splurge and try the YSL Touche Chocolat. I mean, it is a cult classic, and I need to experience that for myself, and probably in the next few months, I will be purchasing it, and I'll let you know. But for under eye concealing, last couple of months, including today, I've been reaching for the CoverGirl Plus Soleil the depuffer. It's not just a depuffer, it's the depuffer. And even though I'm a little more tan than usual, I'm still using the 310 Fair. It's cooling, I like it. Um, gives me good coverage, doesn't get cakey, brightens me up. It's working for me, I like it. And for, uh, I also had talked about the Bobbi Brown Creamy Concealer in Ivory. It was okay. For me, now, looking back, it gets cakey on my dry skin. I don't know why, and it's pretty heavy. And as I'm getting older, I like the coverage, but I like a lighter um, cover. How do I put this? I like more opaque coverage, but I like a lighter finish. I don't want heavy stuff on my face. So I have been using a variety of the same. I have four different shades. They ranging from, let me put them in order. They are depending on where I am in the tanning spectrum of fake tanning and winter from 10, I have 10, 15, 20, and 25. These are the Maybelline Fit Me concealers. Clearly I like them. I bought four of them. I'm gonna mention that. And the last thing that I've talked about was the Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells um, Trio. And it is still the quintessential if you only own one eyeshadow palette and then you can branch out, but the beginner one and the one that I, when I'm in a hurry and I don't know what to wear, is the is this it's the walking on eggshells this is i think still my original palette so this stuff lasts forever and i'm wearing it today i mixed it up a little bit and i'm wearing the crease color on my lid Woo! and i um, blended it out with the lid color and then i used the brow bone just in the inner corner here so nothing i just used um benefit i don't know what it's called the highlighter pencil i just got it yesterday i just used that as my highlighter so that is what you're seeing on my eyes. It's kind of subtle. Um, it definitely shows up better when I'm paler, but it's a beautiful um, trio. It's it's flattering, I think, for most people, and it's wearable in almost any situation, except maybe clubbing, but I'm not really a clubbing person. So those were my favorites from July 2011, and my current favorites, not my favorites, but what is currently in use instead. And I hope you enjoy these. It's really fun for me to go back and see what I was up to back then. This is kind of exciting. This week is my four year anniversary on YouTube. I cannot believe I've been doing this for four years. I feel like I just filmed that video about going to Vermont and buying makeup in Canada. And now I'm here. So thank you for those of you that have been along for the ride this whole time. I really appreciate you. And for those of you that showed up later on the journey, I'm just as happy to have you along. So thank you so much for watching and supporting me, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.